claimed to visit her boyfriend for two months. Do you have any intention of staying longer than that? No. Our concern, though, is really if you decide that you guys want to be together, if he wants to marry you in two months' time, what are you going to do? I can tell you about this, but it's not your business. Are you going to stay in Canada? Are you going to look for a job here? What is your intention? Oh, uh, yes, I will stay in Canada. Where will you stay? Where will you stay? Where will you stay? Since she's meeting her boyfriend, her choice to stay in a hostel raises suspicions. What are you bringing to Canada with you today? Oh, no, sir. The traveler claims to have only $500 in her savings account. Is this going to last you for your entire stay? Yeah. How are you going to get access to your bank account? Do you have a debit card? I have card? my card. Do you have your card? How much money is in here? Come in downtown. Oh, nothing. Nothing in the account. Nothing. But you said you had $500 yeah, or I access. I lied. You lied. So you don't have $500. You have zero money. No. What else did you lie about, ma'am? To find out. Officers will speak to her boyfriend, who is waiting in the terminal. I'll let you in. Just have a chat with you, OK? How do you know? I met her on Facebook. Is she meeting you for the first time? Yeah. In person? In person, first time. OK. The story he was telling me contradicted with the story she was telling me. Did she explain why she wanted to come to Canada? Well, yeah, she loves me. And your residence, she'll be staying with you? Yeah. Where do you live? I'm actually staying at a shelter right now. She'll be staying with you at the shelter? Yeah, I'm gonna try and get her a bed right away. She has no access to funds while she's in Canada. The boyfriend she's coming to visit is a homeless. He's staying in a homeless shelter in downtown Vancouver. She's now lied about where she'll be staying and how she'll be supporting herself while she's here. The officer consults with his supervisor. When we started the interview initially, everything she told us was one lie after another after another. Mm -hmm. She has the idea in her head that she's gonna come here meet the guy, fall madly in love, marry him, never go home. So she's giving you a verbal admission so you to permanently reside in Canada, right? He did as well. So with that, I'm um, requesting an exclusion order. Sounds good. The traveler is handed over to Officer Diana, who will determine if the exclusion order will be enforced. The officer that has dealt with you previously has written a report against you. So I'm here to review that report. Of you. OK. Is it your intention to live in Canada with your boyfriend? Yes. Are you in possession of a permanent resident visa to do no. so? Yes. Based on that information, I find that the report is valid. And as a result, um, I've determined that you are inadmissible to Canada because you are not in the possession of a permanent resident visa. You are going to be removed from Canada on the next available flight home. You will depart Canada sur le prochain vol. I've came here for two months. That's a mistake. If you don't sign it, you need to come back here. If you don't sign it, it doesn't affect our decision. The removal order is still enforced. Do you have any questions? Okay, you need to calm down because if you're going to act that way, that's not in your benefit. In the end, she was given a notice of exclusion, meaning she cannot return to Canada for one year. Okay. Okay. There's a lot of reasons why we're excluding her, namely, um, she has no source of income. She has $5 to her name with no access to funds while she's in Canada. The boyfriend she's coming to visit is uh, homeless. He's staying in a homeless shelter in downtown Vancouver. While she was staying here, the intent was to stay in the homeless shelter with him and living off public funds.